Part two, optimal capital structure theory. Although in our example, firms capital restructuring decision does not make any difference to shareholders, it may change the value of the firm real world. This part, we will see one of the most famous theoretical works in capital structure, optimal capital structure theory. Optimal capital structure theory is developed by two reputed scholars, Nobel laureates Franco Modigliani and Morton Miller, usually called m, &M. They explained capital structure using two propositions, MM1 and MM2. <coughs> MM1 is about firm value itself, so the called pi model, and MM2 is about the cost of capital. We already know that the firm should choose capital structure that maximizes firm value and minimize the cost of capital. Using these two factors related to cash flows and risk, they try to find the relation between capital structure and firm value with three cases. First case, let's assume that we don't pay any taxes and there is no bankruptcy then it is very clear that firm's capital structure choice does not make any differences to shareholders' wealth as seen in the previous example, homemade leverage. There are no cash flows changed by the capital restructuring, so firm value does not change. In addition, WAC does not change either only cost of equal increases as leverage. Since financial risk increases. As shown in the graph, the change in capital structure weight weight on equity and weight on debt is exactly offset by change in cost of equity. So the wax stay the same. Top case two. A firm has a WAC and ignoring taxes of 12%. It can borrow at 8%, assuming that the firm has target capital structure of 80% equity and 20% debt. What is the cost of equity? We use formula cost of equity equals to WAP plus When minus cost of debt times debt to equity ratio. Here, cost of equity is WAC 12% plus 12% minus 8% cost of debt 4%. Times debt to equity ratio, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.8, 0 0.25, 13%. In case one, explanation is simple, but we all know that we live in the world with taxes. So let's assume that we have tax, but still no bankruptcy. In case two, we pay taxes. Now, increasing leverage may change the cash flow. Interest on that is tax deductible. When a firm adds debt, it reduces taxes. All else, else equal. The reduction in taxes increases the cash flow of the firm. The reduction in taxes reduces the net income. For example, Unlevered firms if it is 1,000, if the tax rate is 
its net income is 790. Cash flow from asset is simply 790 EBIT minus taxes. Now let's say we borrow $1,000 with 8% interest. A firm pays $80 interest, so taxable income decreased by $80, 920. Then the amount of taxes is 920 times 21%, 193.20, $16.80 lower than unlevered firm. That income is $726.80. Now cash from from asset is EBIT minus taxes from plus depreciation, 1,000 EBIT minus $193.20. $806.80, which increased by $1680, the amount of interest tax shield, which is the amount of interest times tax rate. Since annual tax shield is interest expense time tax rate, we can rewrite it. The amount of debt times cost of debt times tax rate. It never stops, so it is a perpetuity. The present value of the perpetuity is simply cash flow divided by required returns. Here's the cost of that. So the present value of interest tax shield is the debt value times cost of debt times tax rate divided by cost of debt. The amount of that times tax rate. In our example, is $1,000 that times 21% tax rate, $210. So it means that leverage increase increases firm value by $210 present value. If leverage increases, the present value of tax shield also increases. MN1 in case two tells us that higher leverage increases firm value. The graph shows that the firm value keep increasing as debt increases. The blue part is the amount of interest tax shield. Web also decreases since we include interest factor in computing web. As we increase that, there will be more savings from tax shield. So web will decrease. Case two with taxes. Higher leverage is always good. Increase as much as possible. However, huge suspicion should arise. We know that no companies keep increasing debt. We know that it is risky. Now we should include another factor related to risk. K3 with taxes and bankruptcy. If a firm does make promise payment when we borrow money, bankruptcy should be filed either by a firm itself or by creditors. Now, a firm and creditors need to find a way to make a promise payment in full or in many cases only in part. And bankruptcy is a costly process, not free. There are direct costs and indirect costs. Direct costs include legal and administrative costs. For Enron case, it was $1 billion. 
Since all debt may not be paid back, bondholders incur additional losses. In addition, huge indirect cost will incur. It is even larger than direct costs, but more difficult to measure and estimate. Stockholders wish to avoid a form of bankruptcy. Bondholders want to keep existing asset inact so they can at least receive their money. So the firm cannot invest in profitable projects. The firm will lose asset value as management spend time worrying about avoiding bankruptcy instead of running business. Low sales, interrupted operations, and loss of valuable employees, low morale, inactive inability to purchase goods on credit, etc. Many types of indirect costs will would incur and very expensive. Let's let's make a model with it. With financial distress, significant problems meeting debt obligation, bankruptcy may happen. This only happens when a company has debt. If it is unlevered, there's no promise payments to make, so there is no possibility to be bankrupt. As leverage increases, the amount of promise payments increases and the probability of bankruptcy increases. When we include expected bankruptcy costs in MM1 proposition, expected bankruptcy cost equals to probability of bankruptcy times bankruptcy cost. So the loss in firm value from expected bankruptcy cost increases as leverage increases. Let's combine everything. More leverage increase firm value by adding more interest tax shield, but decrease it by subtracting increasing expected bankruptcy cost. So at some point, the additional value of the interest tax shield will be offset by the expected bankruptcy cost. That point will be the one that maximizes firm value optimal capital structure. At this point, the value of the firm will start to decrease and the WAC will start to increase as more debt is added. The graph shows that there should be D star, optimal amount of debt. The problem is we know it exists in theory, but don't know how to find it in real world. This is the most serious problem in optimal capital structure theory. So many firms simply assume that good competitors should have this optimal capital structure, setting benchmarks and try to follow it. In conclusion, MM1 and 2 says, say that without taxes and bankruptcy, capital structure doesn't matter, but with taxes, that is always good finally and with taxes and bankruptcy, there should be a certain leverage that maximizes firm value and minimizes wealth. This is the end of chapter 13. Have a wonderful rest of the day.